And today, Justin Sullivan was sentenced to life in prison for turning against his own country and his own people. Based upon the evidence submitted to the court, beginning around September of 2014, Sullivan converted to Islam and thereafter became a violent Islamic extremist. He began to watch and download speeches by ISIS supporters and to watch and study videos, violent, violent videos of executions of persons believed or deemed by ISIS to be non-believers. Sullivan kept a journal in which he wrote about the actions of the United States military in Iraq and Syria. Um, and because of these military actions, Sullivan advocated against the United States as in retaliation. He expressed in these journals a desire to create a new Islamic State in the United States called the Islamic State of North America, or ISNA. During this time and during his radicalization, he began to plan mass killings of innocent victims in North Carolina and Virginia, a murderous plot that was serious and imminent based upon our investigation. He planned to attack a concert or a club, places that we would call soft targets, places where people would be about enjoying their lives and not expecting acts of violence. He planned to use a semi-automatic weapon, an AR-15. He planned to use hollow point ammunition in that AR-15 because he knew that he could inv inflict mass casualties and mass pain. He also planned to use a silencer so that he could move about in a stealth manner. And as you heard from the court today, Sullivan was not all talk. On the contrary, his intentions were willful, his intentions were clear, and his plan of action to carry out these acts was concrete. As Sullivan told an FBI undercover agent, whom he believed at the time to be sharing the same violent ideologies, uh, that he wanted this agent to become his partner in this crime, that he wanted to recruit this FBI undercover agent to assist him in this violent endeavor. And he told the FBI undercover agent that it was smart and better to remain in the United States to fight ISIS instead of going abroad and engaging in military actions against ISIS there. No passport needed. You can stay here and fight for the Islamic State. We can kill where we are. As Sullivan admitted during his plea hearing last year, he took substantial steps toward carrying out this plan that he had devised. As I said, he recruited an undercover FBI agent who he believed to be someone who shared his violent ideologies. He obtained a silencer uh, built to specifications to use in these violent activities. He procured money that he could then use to buy the weapons that he wanted to use, weapons that he believed to be the most deadly. He, as I said earlier, tried to obtain or planned to obtain a specific but hopefully elude notice. And of course, he even went so far as to find coupons to the gun shows so that they could attend them. In addition to planning the violent attacks and taking these steps to ensure that he could kill as many as possible, he also decided that it would be important to video what he was doing. So we know that he intended to film his deadly attacks and then send these videos to ISIS. And this was his effort to make his own contribution to their violent video collection. We know of Sullivan's violent plans because he was obviously communicating with the FBI undercover agent, but also with Junaid Hussein, who is a prominent ISIS leader in Syria. He's the ISIS leader who is predominantly responsible for sharing the violent videos and, and the propaganda, which helps to not only further ISIS, but to recruit people like Justin Sullivan. Sullivan was so intent on carrying out this terror plot uh, based on the evidence that when his parents became concerned, when this package arrived at his home, the package containing the silencer, and when his parents undercovered this plot, when they learned that he was going to engage in something violent, obviously, 
Uh, Sullivan then contacted the FBI undercover agent and asked him to kill his parents because he feared his plans to carry out this mass execution would be disrupted by them. But for the FBI's intervention and, of course, the cooperation of our state and local law enforcement partners, Sullivan might have succeeded in carrying out these executions right here in the Western District of North Carolina. As you all know, few offenses can be more serious than the mass execution of innocent people in the name of ISIS. And the life sentence which the judge handed today reflects the seriousness of Sullivan's offenses. The life sentence entered by the court today also protects the public from further crimes committed by Sullivan. And it serves, importantly, it serves as a deterrent to those who wish to harm civilians within our borders. Sullivan in his planning showed disrespect and disregard for human life. And the cold and calculated nature of his plans established why the public, why the public needs to be ensured that he's not going to be free to engage in any additional violent acts, no matter what his ideology may be. The Sullivan case is now behind us many months of work and great investigation, but our fight against terrorism continues. Our fight against those who commit violent acts on behalf of groups like ISIS or any foreign, other foreign terrorist organizations, this will continue. But today, thanks to the work of investigators and the prosecutors on this case um, and our state and local law enforcement partners, there is one less individual among us willing to kill innocents in the name of the Islamic State. And one less threat to the security of our nation, and for that we are all very thankful. I'm going to turn the podium over to Assistant Special Agent in Charge Farley. At the conclusion of her remarks, I'll be happy to take any of your questions. Thank you. Thank you, U.S. Attorney Rose. Good afternoon. Identifying a terrorist before an attack happens is one of the greatest challenges we face in the FBI. It's harder than finding the proverbial needle in the haystack. It's like finding that needle in a stack of needles. But that's exactly just what happened in this case. With the help from the public and working with our law enforcement partners, we were able to identify and disrupt Justin Sullivan before he was able to carry out his murderous plot. We'd like to specifically thank the Burke County Sheriff's Office and the North Carolina State Bureau of Investigation for their great work with this case and their collaboration. Justin Sullivan had elaborate plans to kill hundreds of people to show his support and allegiance to ISIS. Homegrown violent extremists like Sullivan pose a serious and significant threat to our security and safety. They're becoming increasingly more savvy and they're harder to detect. We're working our hardest with all of our partners to stay ahead of those people who might be inspired by the rhetoric of ISIS and influenced to act upon it. We know we saved many lives with the arrest of Justin Sullivan. However, the public is an essential part of maintaining the safety of our communities. It includes taking note of any suspicious behavior you see. If you see something, say something. Err on the side of caution, trust your gut, and let us follow up. No details too small in helping us determine if an individual has intentions of committing an act of violence. Our aim is not to scare the public, however, is to educate citizens on the ongoing battle and challenge we face on an everyday basis in law enforcement. It's to get citizens to be a proactive partner in helping us fight terrorism. And today is a perfect example of what that partnership can do. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Jill, yes. Uh, the, this whole case started when the dad called for help very difficult for a father to do it. See something, say something, but that goes to within the family too. Did that father's actions save lives? Absolutely. And what's really important, when we say see something, say something, I think the FBI would concur in the opinion that it is within one's community, family, friends, and their small community, uh, that, that those are going to be the first to notice when someone has changed their behavior, is changing their way of life. And so the really important message here is, as Assistant Special Agent Charge uh, Farley said, is if you see something, say something. But it's often those closest 
closest to the person they're going to know that. What I'm getting at is that we've seen in several other cases, uh, Orlando and others, mm -hmm. that people who were close, fathers or mothers, noticed something. How difficult do you think this had to be for his dad? I really can't speculate on, on what his family was feeling at the time, but I'm a parent, um, and I know it would be very hard. Uh, so, but his father was a military man. He had served his country before, and I think this was a, an additional service to his country. Jill, if you were, the FBI was months into the investigation though, before they got the call from the father. The father just set up the investigation. Felt like the FBI had to take action at that point. Exactly. Okay, so the FBI was already aware that there was a problem there, correct? There's two calls. Yes, there had been prior contact. Um, our investigation has revealed. Is length of time? Right. Um, months? Is that right? Do you, do you know the date? Like, not the exact date, but like what month that? Well, he became, started becoming radicalized in the fall of 2014, and by the summer of 2015, um, he was being more proactive in, in his activities. I've got a question. Oftentimes, in these types of cases, you do hear that, you know, somebody has been a sympathizer or they're, they're looking at them for quite some time. Where did that breakdown from when you do decide to step in and, and file charges or, or take it to the next level? Because there was some time that you've been investigating him, but it seems like his father's step was what, what sped up that process. So where did that breakdown They're, they're going to step in. Uh, if, if there is an ongoing investigation, uh, law enforcement's going to step in at the point where uh, there's a risk, a grave risk to human life. Uh, now, you know, any, every case is different, and so if they're proactively working an investigation, obviously they want to gather as much evidence as they can. Uh, they want to learn as much as they can, particularly about any foreign terrorist organization with whom uh, someone within this country may be coordinating, but obviously uh, protection of the public's first and foremost. Can you say uh, within the investigation how the contact was first initiated with him and an agent and how this first uh, It was communication through social media. Any specific social media outlets you can talk about? Not going to comment on that. Um, what we know about Justin Paulson's case now is out in the open, but what else is out there specifically in North Carolina in regards to homegrown terrorists? Well, I know it's not an easy question. Yeah, we're, and we're not going to comment on anything that may be an ongoing investigation. Certainly, homegrown violent extremists is something that the FBI and all our federal partners work on. Um, one thing we see in North Carolina tends to be sovereign citizen types, those, the domestic terrorism side of the house. Uh, but again, one of the things that makes ISIS and organizations like them, but ISIS is particularly effective as this, is its social media recruitment. Uh, their leader over their social media is as prominently ranked in the organization as their field generals. So they know that this is a way to win the hearts and minds of American youth or those who may be disenfranchised in some way. And so uh, I'll say there, while I can't talk about ongoing investigations, certainly the use of social media uh, by foreign terrorist organizations, particularly ISIS, is one of the ways that they're most effective. Well, I know you can't talk about the specific social media outlet, but how, how easy is it? I mean, could someone in this room, if they wanted to, you know, hop on a social media site, I mean, could, could anyone do it, or does it take a lot of digging for someone to actually find these avenues to get in contact? Look, you can go on YouTube and see ISIS beheading it, uh, videos. It's not hard to find, and and uh, so yes, you can find ISIS on Twitter or any other social media outlet. Um, um, more hey, Mike, how are you? Um, are there active ISIS investigations going on in North Carolina? And we're not going to comment on any ongoing investigations. A little scamp. We're not going to do that. Um, there are active investigations always against those who wish to do harm to the United States. Yes, there are. Yes, there are. I think the facts would show otherwise. All right. You, know? oh. yeah, you had mentioned you had specific targets in mind in Virginia and North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Can you be any more specific than that? Were they in Asheville or Hendersonville? Did, uh, get, did he get that specific? He he planned to go after a concert or something like that, a gathering of people. It's believed that it would have been close to home, um, but definitely here in Western North Carolina. Thanks. All right, thanks, y'all. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you.